there, I'm Stephen Wehner. I want to walk you through how to install Ruby Gems without internet access. So you have a host, a system, and you have a Ruby script, you have a Ruby program, and the Ruby program requires a Ruby gem to run. And you want to install this on a system that uh, does not have internet access. So how can, how can it be that you have a, a system without internet access? First, it might not have a, a working network card. It might be in a location where there is no internet access. Or you may not want it to have internet access because, let's say, it has sensitive data and you uh, want to make absolutely sure that uh, that data does not get uh, accessed from the internet. Or another, another reason could be that uh, you want to install the gem in the future, let's say next week or next month, and that is your job, and you need to make absolutely sure that that is going to actually uh, succeed. And so you want to uh, prepare, prepare your, uh, your process for uh, that time, and you don't want to have any hiccups or problems caused by other systems uh, uh, not being available, for example, a uh, uh, RubyGem server or uh, GitHub or any other, any other. Um. So I will walk you through three different ways how to accomplish this. The first way will be for a single gem, and we will uh, use the gem command itself in certain ways to accomplish this. Then I will show you how to handle it for a whole gem file. And so then we will uh, use the bundle command in a, in a certain way. And then we will go through how to set up your own gem server and how to uh, prepare it, preload it with the gems that you uh, uh, require. Here is my bash prompt. Let's see, I have a, a Ubuntu machine. This is the newest Ubuntu, Ubuntu 21. I have Ruby, Ruby 3.0. I have the gem command, 3.23. So what are we gonna do? We're going to show how to install Ruby gems without internet access using the gem command. Let's make this screen bigger for you. And uh, let's start with um, just, just to create a, a, a gem set. I'm using um, RVM. I don't think it um, makes too much difference. Uh, use demo. And uh, let's see if we have a gem called ABCD. We don't, but we can install it. We can install it from the internet. And what is this gem? This gem is now installed. And it is, whoops, and it is um, info ABCD. It is created by Partik Singler. And thank you very much, Partik. It has um, these contents. And we can look at that. It doesn't really do very much. It's a, it's a gem just for a, a sample gem, just like it's useful right now. So um, now let's say we wanted to install this on a different um, uh, system which does not have internet access. So let's, let me show you the uh, gemenv has uh, useful information. So we can, with gemenv, we can see what, what Ruby version do we have, what Ruby gems version do we have. But also there are paths here. And if we look at this one here, which we can also get through um, gem uh, home, ls, there is a cache directory. And in that cache directory, we can find the gem file. So if we copy this, abcd, 
let's say to the temp directory, I'm going to show you how to install it without uh, internet access. So first I have prepared, um, let's say we should first uninstall this ABCD. So we don't have it anymore. Um, and now I have prepared a script to turn off um, turn off the internet access here. Uh, is it networking turn off? Oops. Sorry. Um, off. Okay. Now we cannot ping anymore. Network is unreachable. And now we can go to the temp directory and we can install ABCD. All right, there we go. Gen this ABCD. So the first way to install uh, a gem without internet access is to get a hold of the uh, Gem, dot gem file and then you can install it. You can transfer that file to the machine, you can put it on a USB stick, you can email it, whichever way. Now let me show you something else. Um, I have prepared a gem, a sample gem, uh, a sample gem which also does not do very much. All it does is it gives you a method that tells you that gem uh, that it works. Um, so when you have, so you can, for example, you can find uh, people uh, uh, publishing their gem, including all the source code, just like here. And when you have that, you it comes with a, a gem spec file. And when you have a gem spec file, you can run command um, gem a. Uh, you can run command gem build. And now you can install. First, we, we don't have we don't have uh, any gem A installed, but we can now install it just like uh, I showed you before. With the ABCD gem, we can install this gem, and now we have a command gem A, and it works. And we can use this uh, um, gem. And the reason I'm showing you this is because I have also made a gem B. And this gem B depends depends on gem A. So now I can uh, similarly to gem uh, A, I can build the gem and I can install the gem the same way and I get an executable. Gem A works and Gem B works, so um, Gem B just has the same code, except it first invokes um, Gem A. And so the point of this uh, exercise is that if I copy my Gem B, oops, my Gem B to the temp directory, and I copy my, um, sorry, Gem A, to the temp directory and I in uh, uninstall oops gem uninstall gem a and I uninstall oops gem b then um, I can install gem b from just having the local um, .gem files and it will automatically uh, find that gem B requires gem A and it will install both. So if I do uh, just, do we have gem A, do we have gem B? No, we don't, but if we install, we can install gem B and it will install gem A and gem B. And we will get the commands. So this is the uh, so what this shows is that if you have your uh, .gem files, 
the gem command, even when there is no internet access, remember I don't have uh, internet access, in fact, the my gem A and gem B are definitely not on rubygems.org. So even if you don't have internet access, but you have the .gem files, the gem command will figure out the dependencies and install just what is needed. Okay, so we're going to go over how to install RubyGems without internet access using Bundler. I have prepared a small example based on Bundler. We have a gem file. It just um, uses our gem B. And the demo, the demo script just invokes gemb works. And if we do um, bundle install, we will get our gem file log. It just has the, the two gems. Remember, gem B depends on gem A. And uh, of course, we can run our demo script. And now, how to install it on a a uh, remote uh, machine that doesn't have uh, internet access, we can first run bundle in uh, bundle cache. This is our command, and it will create a directory vendor which has a directory cache, and this has our two gem files. So if we uninstall gem A and uninstall oops, uninstall gem B, we can install, we can get our uh, gems back by running bundle install local. Then it will look within the, in that vendor cache directory and uh, install the gems. So, um, so to distribute so if you want to uh, install uh, gems ba based on a gem file using Bundler with, uh, uh, without, when you have no internet access, you would transfer this vendor cache directory to the other uh, machine and then you can simply use the command bundle install local and um, that is pretty straightforward. Okay, we are now going to go over how to install Ruby gems using your own gem server. So this is for the case that your machine is connected to a local network, but not the public internet. There are many tools to do such a thing. I have installed a um, gem called Gem in a Box, and it's already uh, I already have installed it version 1.4.1. It is uh, developed by these um, authors here, Tom Lee, Jack Foy, Rob Nichols, Natoshi Seo. There's a homepage here and you can find more information there. Basically, I have prepared a sample uh, uh, setup for this. My rack-up file basically starts the um, gem in a box server and my my um, I'm using the thin server to serve this as a rack up uh, as a rack uh, server so let's start this and then I, I basically what the way they have <laughs> thought about is you can add th um, gem files to this box using this command gem in a box and gem um, just the pa path to the to the gem file. So now I have t these two these two gems published in this uh, server. Basically, I can go to my bundler example. I can add the source um, HTTP localhost 2.9.2 to my gem file. 
Remember, I still have the uh, gem A installed, but I can uninstall it. And I can uninstall the gem B too. And now, if I even uh, remove the log file, so I just have the gem file, I can run bundle install, for example, and it will go to that, um, to my server and uh, install the gems. So my demo will work now. And that's, uh, there, there are many, there are many other ways to, to serve uh, gems over, over a server. Um, and this is, uh, this is how that works. So I hope you like that. <laughs> There's, uh, at the end, I, I could have also shown how to use the gem command itself to uh, install gems from your local uh, server. So if you look through the manual pages, it's, uh, uh, you, you, you should be able to find that option and how to, how to set that up. So I, I hope you found that useful. There's, uh, there's many ways to do this and uh, you know, most likely only, only one of these options is going to work for you. I wanted to mention about the history. So the, the Ruby language came out in 1995 and uh, Ruby Gems 2003 and Bundler 2010. pretty stable and uh, so as you can see the the the, the block uh, the so basically you know gems give you dot gem files and dot gem files can be installed and they can be obtained in various ways and uh, uh, moved around in various ways and uh, Show you how to um, how that can be done when you when you have no internet access. Thanks.